Good morning everyone. It is 20 after 4 and I am here with my creative year, hashtag my creative year, for the prompt of completed or complete. I'm very excited about this video today. I just can't stand it. I was going to record later today but I couldn't sleep. I was just ready to do this because it's wonderful for me. All right, so over the, um, let's see, in October, I went away to Myrtle Beach to an art retreat. While I was there, I was gifted a delusions journal along with two, this one, and then the black one by Peg Robinson. And I set out on a mission once I got back on filling it up and putting art in here because I'm not a mixed media journaler. I'm a dual journaler. Yes, I know. It took me a while to probably come to that, that conclusion. <laughs> so here it is. It's finished. This, this is my flip through. All the things that are contained in here, all the pens and stuff, were things that I used in the video, the last video for tools. It's the Stabilos. It's the white and the black, which I don't have handy right here because I think it's in the other. Oh, here it is. The white and the black jelly pens. Um, the art line pens. The micron pens. And let's see what else. Would I oh, yeah. And the uh, detail doodlers from Walmart. These right here. So I, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's finished. So here is my flip might be more than 20 minutes, so hang on. All right, so the first day that I got it, um, Peg and I sat down and we talked about all the different pens. The pen that's smeared are the R2s, um, R2 blasts, and they did smear once I put the sealant on them. It made them smear. Um, if you, like I said in the last video, if you're not a person who has issues with like pencil shading rubbing off onto the other page, then none of this will be an issue for you. So the first page, I just tested all the different pens I think I might want to use in here to see how they would do on the paper. And all of them did great, except for once I put the gel medium over it, then it just kind of went downhill from there. All right, so <clears throat> these were given to me by Cindy Utter. And um, I just started, I went through my image container and just started gluing them on there and then I ran out so that's why there's the white gap there. All right, so I started playing with the R2 Blast Pen because we had gone to a Dollar Tree in the local area in Myrtle Beach and I wanted to play with them and so I just started doing little ge geometric um, designs on here and once I got home I found these two images in my image box and wanted to see what would look like putting images on top of the doodles. This was because of Shell C, who was also at the art retreat. I had never done um, painting with paper. And so I came home and went through my stuff and tried to replicate what I briefly saw her do while we were there. And I had a lot of fun with it. And I also used a lot of scraps. And that made me very happy because now I have room to make no, new paper, to create more scraps, to make new things, to create new paper, to make more scraps. You know how it goes. Then I played around with more of the pens. These are the, the R2 Blast pens. The red ones, I'm not sure where they are from. I can't remember what I used on this one because this was like back in October. But it was fun. And I'm very pleased with the results. Then I thought, okay, let's try watercolor on this paper. And I did all right with it until I started to put the gel medium over it to preserve it. Then the colors from the pens on the other page bled through the watercolor in various places on here. Makes the flowers look really cool. It was very unexpected, but I'm okay with it because at least it didn't bleed out like, you know, down here a big blob or something like that. Because this is that red flower from the other side. This stuff right here. I didn't put that in there. But I like the way it looks. Then I started doing something that I saw Rebecca Blair do on Pinterest where she would take a little bit of paper and then doodle some and then more paper. So I took, again, scrap pieces from my scrap pile and tore them and cut them and made flowers to put on the bottom. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I was just 
messing around with stuff, trying to see what would look good. All right, so this is done with the Detail Doodlers from Walmart. And again, they do beautiful colors. They look nice. The, the nibs are really strong. Like I said, they fit well in my hand until they put the gel medium on them. And then I began to see that my white was turning a lovely shade of blue. <laughs> I let it go, live and learn. You don't always need to seal your work. I just have become obsessed with it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, so this side was from Pinterest where they do the long lines of things, of the little, little cutesy um, shapes. They shaded them, and I really like the way it looked. And these are all from these, except for the black. The black, I think, was Micron Pen. And then I went to um, seal it, and I have, like, faint pink. The pink and the red were the ones that bled the most down this way. Mostly it's the pink pen that did it. And I think it's because I made too many passes over it with the um, sponge brush or the brush I was using for the gel medium. Did not need to seal this, just been testing to see what it's like. I did shadows with gray watercolor paint and that's not what's smeared. It was actually the pens themselves. They are not water resistant. This one was done with green paint, a whole bunch of lines from a jelly roll pen, and all these were done with a je black jelly roll pen. Yeah, it's a little weird on the eyes. I'm looking at the camera, and it, it's um, a little frightening on the eyeballs. <laughs> these are, I think these are called jelly rolls. I can't remember the official name for them. Then I wanted to try the... Um, which pen did I use? I think I used the green one of these in here. Some kind of a green pen. Maybe it was a, um, I'm trying to think of what I used on it. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, it was a green pen. I'm thinking it might have been a fine point Sharpie marker. And made leaves. Of course I sealed it and it did not smear. But it did bleed on the other side, so I collaged on the other side. Again, this is an idea that came from Chelsea doing paper painting. So I took jelly prints that I had and tore them, uh, used the bottom, the sky, the leaves, and the stems, but the heads of the flowers are from a scallop punch that I punched out um, painty paper that was left over and then doodled on top of that. And some of them, you can feel, well, you can't feel them, but some of them I glued two of these together to give it more depth. And it actually worked. I mean, it, it does look cool and you can feel that there's like two or three layers of this one there and two layers of this one and the rest of these are just the single round and these two have this one has two and this one has three piled up on it I like the way it looks all right so then I did the video on um, the little tiny books where I put the doodle prompts in them so I could leave them by my table at night when I in the living room while I watch TV. So what I did was I set out to prove that you can do that and make cool stuff just by using those two little books that I made. So here are all the images. All these images came out of the book and the little pages that I printed off. So these are all from the book. None of them are from my imagination. <laughs> so there's that one. And then I got really carried away and I did two more pages not one respective of the other. This was something totally different. But these are all the images that came out of those little books. These are all the images that came out of one of those little books. I wish now, now I really love these two pages, but I wish that I had made them a two page spread instead of two single pages. The continuity would have been nice to see it go across there, but I really am pleased with the way it looks. Either way, I love it. Okay. And then I tried this one, trying to see how it would look if I put something kind of different on this end and something different on this end, and then have them meet in the middle so what they're kind of like mirror images. So these little blobs are the same as these. These little flowers are the same as these. So I tried to do it so stuff was coming in like this way and then meets in the middle. This one, I was in, and, and again, these are images from those two little books. This one was inspired by piping. I saw some kind of a pipe pipe arrangement on Pinterest. I don't even know what I was looking at. And it just reminded me 
of pipes like in the city sewer type thing and you know so I thought well let me do pipes and circles and squares and see how it looks and they were all connected with I think a skinny line but instead I chose to do some of the images out of those little books and again these came are images that came out of those two little books next to um, next to me on the couch this is the same thing I was playing around with the images from those little books and just randomly picked out images and went okay that looks cool and just went from the bottom up it was so much fun. I love doing this kind of line work. This was done with a jelly roll pen. And I love black jellies on paper. Except for when they skip. Sometimes they skip and you have to go back over it again. And it leaves a little blob, but it's okay. I like this. This is some of my most favorite kind of line work right here. And I painted on the back of it and it did bleed through right here. So you have to be careful what you use. Remember I told you in the last video, know what your pen is capable of doing. And this was in the very beginning when I first started and I did not understand how bad the bleeding would be through this paper. And there you go. These again are these and the R2 Blasts. This one right here specifically. And it bled through because when you color these in solid, it bled through to the other side over here. So that's why some of the pages, if I do, like this one, if I do something heavy where I do a lot of coloring, I tried to collage on the back side so you can't see where it bled through. I didn't do that for every one of them, but I did get that idea after a while. So um, I did not seal this page because I know that after doing the test that these bleed, so I did not um, seal this page. But I wanted to repeat something, so I took the little ones that I drew, and then I took a um, piece of cardstock and colored all these in with these, and then did the shapes and outlined them, and then glued them on the bottom here. I wanted it to mimic the top and the bottom. This one, hearts. I did not want to put color on it. I wanted to use black and white, but once I looked at it and saw all the white in the, the hearts, I decided, well, maybe a little gray. It is kind of dark, but I, I kind of like it. I don't do anything with gray usually, but I really like the way this one turned out. And yes, I did seal it, and no, it did not run. But it did bleed on the other side, so hence another collage on the other side. So this is, again, the paper painting and I just cut these out with um, scissors. I didn't do anything special with this. I'm not as fond of this one as I am with the one on the other page. I like this because I like doing these kinds of things where you use a lot of black ink to fill in the empty spaces, this kind of stuff, the twisty rope type things. These are all patterns that came from those two little books. Here's another one that came out of one of those little books. And you know, when I did the little books, the little pictures are um, like they're less than two by two. So what I saw on this one and the two by two was this little section right here. And then I knew that these went out and then followed that and then just took little teeny, uh, the little circle ones that I found in the little books and just put a different pattern in every one of the empty spaces. Then I looked at it and went, well, that's nice, but it doesn't really accentuate anything. So I took watercolors and just watercolored out this direction. I had some of this paper that I had made a while ago and I wanted the color to bounce off from one to the other. So I picked this kind of limey green paper, which I really like this color, to mimic this right here. And it just so happens it's okay with the blue and this, you know, it's okay with the other colors. Again, just trying out patterns, trying to do swirls and then trying to figure out shading. This was just a practice piece. These are all images from the little books. The twisty, turny stuff and mostly circles. Again, just patterns from the little books. And I was trying this, the same thing as I did back here with this other one, with the pipe looking one. It was to kind of go along this theme here, the cogs. This one is a different version of the ones where the things were coming from the top to the bottom. So I did it this way this time, but I didn't mimic. All I did, the only thing I did was mimic the fact that there was a braid or a chain around both of these, filled in the inside of the chains, and then just went, you know, kind of basic in the middle. So I didn't take away from what was here and here. 
This was um, a Rebecca Blair-esque <laughs> piece. Mine did not turn out exactly the way hers did, but I'm very happy with the way it is. I'm not really thrilled with the colors that I used up and down here, but I do like the pen work that's in there in the middle. Working on more line work. Just did circles that were inter, um, intersecting other circles where you changed what the intersection is. Did lines. Put this down here at the bottom and was going to do something else with this and decided just to let it go and leave it alone. Again, this color kind of bounces off the teal from this side. This was to do as many designs on the page as I could possibly do and have, you know, usually when you take a Zentangle class, one of the first things they teach you is to do a string. You make this design and then you doodle different things in the different portions of the design. Well, this was kind of like that, but I did not draw um, the string. I just liked this pattern here. So I thought, okay, well, let me break up the page. So then I just drew that you know, in lots of different places and then filled in the empty spaces with different kinds of doodles from those little books. This, uh, after I did this, I thought, well, I'll doodle on it. I went, no, I really like the way it looks just fine the way it is. I should have done red here in these places so it would bounce off the color here, but I don't know what I was thinking, but I still like it. All right, here's another one. This is a design from the little books that was back on where is it? This right here. I didn't, the, the original design when, is the one where it has the little circles around here that look like uh, portholes. I did not put the little circles on here, but it's the same design. And then I thought, well, they look like portholes from a ship. So then I took uh, paint. I painted in here, did the waves, then took a um, Signo pen to do the white. And no, you never see portholes that are all stacked up like this, but I just like the way it looked. Then I just went with some kind of a line work design that's like, you know, wavy to mimic the waves from the ocean. This one I had a little problem with. I really liked the design. It came out of Pinterest. It did not come from one of the little books. I went to seal it and used a dirty makeup sponge as I was trying to put wax on it, but evidently the seal was not completely dry and I got some of the color that was on the dirty makeup sponge and it's smeared across here and now it's permanently sealed in there. <laughs> Live and learn, use a clean sponge. This is a design, the little circles is a design off of Pinterest and in the little book. I like the way this looks. First I did it in black and white and it was very stark and I thought, well, there's more to this design. I did not do the total design. It has like little bars that go back and forth and crisscross in between all of these and I didn't want it on there. So then I came back with a blue uh, pencil, colored pencil and colored in between the lines. Now I'm not a fond, I'm not fond of blue but I really do like the way this looks. And I tried to press down on the pencil a little more to give you know, a little more definition to the rise and falls here. This one was another one of those things where I was trying to do something like this, and then I got halfway up here and went, oh, well, that was dumb, because now I've made little small things. How do I go smaller? Well, I made the little tiny squirrels and little, little square boxes and tried to make them smaller as I went off the page. No, there's no string on this. I just started down here, made those. I thought, well, you know, I can put something here and maybe I need to put a line here and then, oh, let's do circles. That's how my mind works. There's no pre-planning. The only thing that was planned was this right here and the rest of it just kind of happened. Okay, and this one, I like doing the line work. What can I say? I like repetitive line work. So I did the hearts. It didn't come out exactly the way the picture was that... I looked at because I did not measure. See, I should have had another row of these large hearts, but because I started with this row and went this way, then as I got to the edge of the page, I was like, oh, I don't have enough to have big, big hearts. So that's the reason I got small ones here and small ones here. So if you're going to do something where you want to make it exactly like what you see, maybe you should measure. Of course, I never do that, but just telling you. <laughs> Again, this is a Rebe Rebecca Blair idea where um, you just do line work. All it is is lines. There's no circles on it anywhere. It's just lines with a thick versus thin pen, 
um, spaced out lines versus very small, tiny, delicate lines. I use different sizes of Micron pens and the Jelly Roll pen in between for a really small, little small lines like this. I use this. And then I use different sizes of the Micron pens for definition. Again, more line work. Just trying to do an optical illusion type thing. It does make your eyes kind of tired looking at all these lines, doesn't it? This again is more line work, but the point to this is that I, sh I was shading, trying to give boxes, you know, depth. I don't know how well that worked out, but it was fun doing it. And this is all done with a uh, jelly roll pen, and then I finally ran out of ink and had to order new jelly rolls. This was based on a design I saw randomly on Pinterest about pa the Paisley design, except for this. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. I started drawing it, and then I, don't, I, I must have lost my train of thought or got up and left and come back and started again. The rest of these are based on different Paisley patterns that I saw on Pinterest. And then to fill in all the white, I just did crosshatch lines all through the background. That took a little bit of time. This came off of Pinterest also. I like the way this looks. It was me trying to play with shading on all the little balls here, all the little circles, to give them a little more depth. I got a little crazy right here. I had so much fun doing this book. Just loved it. This one um, was based on something I saw on Pinterest and looks almost nothing like what I saw. I decided after I put all these, I had like dozens of little circles in here. It was white background and then dozens of little circles everywhere. And I started looking at them like, you know what? I don't even like those. So I went back with a Micron pen and colored in all the white spaces in between the designs in black. And I like this much better. I think it stands out a lot better. This one was just playing around um, last night with different kinds of um, chain type things. It is not sealed. This one is, this one is not. I left this one alone because this is a um, jelly roll and there's no need to seal that one because this one is sealed so none of the pencil will rub off on the side. This was done with watercolor and it was starting to bleed through over here. You can see just a teeny bit of blue right there. So I let up, uh, this is not watercolor, this is uh, Deco Art Translucent Paints. And they go a long way. A little dab will do you. <laughs> so I first I did the circles randomly. And then I drew all the other stuff in to make them look like a field of flowers. And of course, this is my favorite Debbie, Debbie Payne flower design. Are these? These were done like a month ago. And I did seal it. And once I started to seal it, I was like, oh, oh I forgot I used some of these and I was really scared. Some of it did smear a little bit, but I was right on top of it and wiped it off with a baby wipe. And there is a little smudging somewhere in here, but overall it looks okay. I'm not, not freaked out by the smudge. And then I collaged on the back side because, you know, these bleed through to the other side. Alrighty, so there's my first completed Dilutions. I don't know what you call this. It's a traveler size, I guess. Um, so there you go. You guys wanted to see what I do for doodling. This is it. I do this at night while I watch TV. Um, some days I'll do two in a day. Sometimes I'll only get like a portion of it done and then come back the next day and finish it. But most of it, I finish, I start and finish all on the same night. I was so excited by using this book. I can't stand it. All right. So there's this one that's finished. Let me give you a preview of the black one because it's going to take me a very long time to do this one. Okay, so this one's all black paper. So again, this was testing paints. This was the um, Deco Art translucent paint. This was different pens, the jelly roll. So the uh, Signos, you saw me use this part right here in a video for tools. So here's what I've gotten done in here. It's just, this is done with black Signo pen. There's no jelly roll in this. This is all the Signo. The white signal. Um, 
I took some very cool washi tape that I got from um, Cindy Utter at the um, art retreat. She had a bundle of all kinds of Dilution or Dina Wakely washi tapes, and I just plucked a few off of the ends and just stuck them down in here so I could remember how wonderful they were. And then I thought, well, let me put frames around them. So I just drew different kinds of frames around them, and then I took... Um, bits and pieces and glued them in between the uh, in between the washi tape. I like this. It's kind of abstracty looking. Again, I like the line work. I like I love how the white and the black look. All right, here's another one. These two are still in progress. This one not quite finished yet. This one is mostly a white jelly roll pen. This one is done with the Signo Pen, the white Signo pen, and I'm, as you can see, I'm I'm not finished with it yet. I can't decide what to do. I think I got bored and stopped, or interrupted. I think you guys already saw this briefly. These are the flowers. This is my favorite thing in the whole book. I love the way they look. They, the white jelly roll on the black paper it looks fantastic. Again, more hearts. This one I measured a little bit better, but then <laughs> when I got to the end here, I'm like, oh, poo. So then I decided to do the hearts sideways. So I did hearts sideways there. That was fun. This one was done with a white jelly roll. And then the inside parts were done with the Signo. This was done with the white Signo. You remember me talking about how when you do a close-up, I don't like some of the white, the black showing through the white. It's not horrible, but I was just trying to show you guys what the Signo is capable of doing, and it's not capable of doing good, solid white. And that, I think, is everything. Okay, so there's my flip-through for completed work. I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out. It's going to be retired. I put the date that I started it, and the date that it ended the month and who it was gifted by. So this will go in my collection. I might have to make some kind of a permanent book and put it inside a permanent book so that, you know, it's safe. I leave it like this. I'm liable to lose it. Thank you, Peg and Cindy. I really appreciate the washi tape and um, I appreciate the Dilutions journal. I'm so excited about how it turned out. All right, so this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio with hashtag my creative year, the prompt complete or completed. See you guys next time. Bye.